Auto Line at CES is brought to you by ETAS, Gentex, Intrepid Control Systems, Magna, and by Yazaki Innovations. So Daniel, tell me who you are and what you do at MSEA. Sure, I'm Daniel Morris. I'm an associate professor in biosystems and ag engineering, as well as in electrical computer engineering. And I do research into uh, sensors, computer vision, sensor fusion, I um, also teach, teach autonomous vehicles, and I teach circuits and systems. So tell me what this Indy Autonomous Race is all about. Uh, this is a chance for uh, universities all around the world to send teams to develop the software, uh, autonomous driving software for uh, the Indy vehicle. And each university is given the same vehicle, all the hardware is the same but it's been outfitted with a variety of sensors, with LIDARs, cameras, uh, advanced GPS, inertial measurement sensors. And the university's job is build a, uh, a virtual driver, an uh, automatic driver, to take it around the, around the course and win, win your race. What does this mean to your students doing this? Well, so yeah, so we've just joined the team. We're, we're like a couple months in. And so it's it's a it's an awesome opportunity. Uh, yeah, I, my my students have been really excited about it. There's, I mean, in general we're excited about autonomous driving, but now this is autonomous driving at high speed, which I guess definitely adds a lot more excitement. Not just more excitement, right? I mean, competition improves the breed. I've always believed that. I got to believe this racing pushes the students here to find problems and fix them faster. Yeah, there's definitely, there's an intense work, work component when, when you have a, a race coming up and you want your car to win, uh, that's motivation to stay up late, get up early, and um, make sure your car is uh, the best it can be. Okay, so tell me a little bit about the competition. I see two cars out here running at a time. You know, what's the deal? What are we watching here? Right, we're, we're watching a uh, two-car race, head-to-head, -head, uh, passing maneuvers. Right now, there is uh, Toom and Heist are two of the teams. They're taking turns uh, passing each other. The lead vehicle is given a, a maximum speed it can operate at, and then the follow chase vehicle has to select an appropriate time with given two laps to pass it. And uh, if it manages to pass it, then uh, that vehicle will become the lead vehicle, and the uh, re uh, chase vehicle has to do the same. Then they'll go up a notch. They're going up, up another 10 or 15 miles per hour and have to repeat that. And so the speeds keep increasing, increasing, until one is unable to pass, or one spins out, or uh, or uh, some reason, something like that. How fast are they going to go that by the end? Do you think? Well, uh, the last race they were going up. They were going about 150 miles an hour. Uh, whoop. It sounded like somebody had to really slam on the brakes. They didn't spin. They didn't spin. Yeah, so, I mean, I expect they'll be going above 150 uh, and hopefully for, hopefully more, 160 perhaps. Now, we're getting close to sunset. My understanding is these cars are going to race in the dark. Is that right? Uh, well, they'll be, I don't know if they'll be racing. They'll be going around in the dark. There'll be a demo. Our vehicle has a bunch of LEDs attached to it, and so we'll be going around the, the course with those. Um, in information, I don't th I don't know that it's actually a race though. But yeah, <laughs> going, it, lo it looks pretty cool in the dark with the LED, and each each one will have its own lights. So what what are the lessons learned? What, what are you going to take home from all this, and especially the students? Yeah. Uh, so there's there are a lot of technical technical challenges we're coming up against. There's hardware. Our steering system is having difficulties right now. Uh, we have to work on the control. Um, we're having perception challenges because our LiDAR is, uh, is vibrating. It's causing the ground plane to, to not be flat. That's creating difficulties. Ultimately, though, uh, 
we, we need to push the boundaries. We need to operate at the very limit of what our vehicle can do uh, without passing that limit and spinning out. So, yeah, we're, we're developing techniques to, to do that, to get, get to the limit and um, make, it, make a pass, hopefully, that the opponent won't be able to beat. So, the cars are all the same. It's, it's really a competition of who comes up with the best software stack, it seems to me. Yep, yep. But there's a lot of ways to do it. There's a huge amount of data. There's a huge amount of sensors. There's more, se more sensor data than we can uh, process uh, in real time. So we have to be selective. We have to choose which sensors we're going to use. We have to choose uh, a lot of different strategies. So it's, yeah, it's about software stack, but it's about strategy too. How do you, uh, there's, just like in real racing, there's strategies between the cars. These, these we can give our give our car a strategy to make it hard for our opponent to pass us by doing certain tricks. Um, so, but but that can't be done by a human driver. It's got to be pre-programmed intelligence into the robot uh, to achieve that. Okay. So, how are you guys doing? How do you think you're going to end up? Um, so, well, in this, this, we're actually not competing in this race. Our vehicle has been upgraded to the AV24 uh, model, and so we'll be competing in the future, future races at Monza and uh, Indianapolis later this year. So, yeah, for those, and actually uh, Goodwood in the UK. So, there's challenges in each of those. Each, each racetrack has its own uh, difficulties. In Goodwood, there's some problems with GPS, where there's uh, tree coverage there, so we're working on ways of uh, traveling, uh, going high speed without uh, failure when there's GPS drop out. Uh, so, yeah, so we're going to be doing different optimizations on each, each uh, race, uh, hoping to, to be the winners in each of them, actually. Well, good luck. Okay. Thanks awesome. for your time, too. All right. My pleasure. At CES January 9th through 12th, 2024, Intrepid's looking forward to seeing you at our booth 3666 Las Vegas Convention Center in the West Hall. We'll be demonstrating the latest and greatest in the software-defined vehicles and Zornal architectures, automotive Ethernet technologies like 10Base T1S and multi-gigabit. See you at CES 2024 Las Vegas Convention Center in West Hall booth 3666 or visit intrepidcs.com sales.